Welcome back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. This is uh, Coronaville. What's next? And we're getting into the what, what's next part with Tim Apicello, Cynthia Sinclair, Winston Welch, and Stephanie Stoll Dalton. Um, so, uh, you know, we got, we got an interesting situation because it's like two tracks. It's one is the Michigas with Trump, um, you know, camping out in the White House and screwing up the transition, um, you know, acting like any, any reasonable three-year-old would act. Um, and then, and then we have coronavirus, which you know it keeps marching on, and and it breaks new records every day. Um, and he's making so many mistakes, incredible mistakes, and he's and he's losing, he's losing his traction, losing his moxie. But he's not going to go down without a without a mess. Um, so let's talk about both of those as intertwined. You know, uh, the first thing is um, you know we 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 have uh, we we have uh, uh, Pfizer. Pfizer comes out with a 90% effective uh, vaccine, Tim. Uh, what's the story there? And why now? Well, before the show, I said CEOs are people too. And something tells me that this particular CEO of Pfizer isn't a Trump fan. Um, we, he, he knew very well that this vaccine was ready to announce. And uh, the fact that it was announced a day after the election, I think is pretty funny. Uh, you know, it's and there's not a thing Donald Trump can do about it. Number one, Pfizer didn't accept one nickel from the um, fast track of the vaccine uh, warp speed. He didn't take a nickel from it. This is their own um, research and development and now announcement. Yeah, when he was interviewed, uh, the guy, the uh, CEO of Pfizer, he seemed to be, uh, you know, a genuine fellow until you find out that he sold 60 percent of his stock. Uh, you know, the day of the announcement. What, what is that? It sounds like insider trading. Uh, what, 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 does, that, does that help you appreciate his sincerity? Well, I'm never going to defend a CEO that makes billions of dollars off their stock sale one day before the announcement. That's, you're not going to get that out of my mouth as far as his defense. <laughs> Allegedly, this was, um, this was a pre-planned uh, short of the stock uh, per a schedule. And it just coincidentally happened uh, moments before the announcement. And I guess he got near high price within pennies of the, uh, the high for that stock. So uh, like every CEO, um, preordain, preordain destiny of stock sale. It reminds me of a song out of uh, the LaGuardia Broadway show years ago. Mr. X, let me ask you a question. It's amazing, is it not? <laughs> that somehow you achieved enough money to buy yourself a private yacht. <laughs> I don't know if anybody remembers that, but it's, it's truly amazing. But he's very sincere on the two. Don't give up your day job. <laughs> Thank you for Actually, that. I was going to say, you got a second career here. I need a bigger audience. Yeah. I can see him uh, on Cats. <laughs> So the, the other thing that came up on, on uh, 60 Minutes on Sunday, Tim, and I know you looked at it because we talked about it, is, is this army general uh, who has been a logistical general who has been assigned to do the, the warp speed project and get everything together in the possibility and the anticipation that there will be a, a vaccine coming soon. Um, is, that, is that realistic? And, and how about the timing on that? And that was also right after the results of the election were made known, not before. We never heard about this guy, at least not in the public media um, before. Now all of a sudden we hear about him. And I just wonder, I mean, what, are these guys saying something? Are they trying to do something that would have an effect or not have an effect on the election? What did you think of that segment on 60 Minutes? Well, my first initial thought was all wars are, are won upon logistics. And they don't get, they don't grab the headlines. Uh, Three-star generals in the logistics, they just don't grab the headlines. They get the job done. And I was totally impressed with his demeanor, his attitude, and his uh, clarity of thought and, and speech on how this is going to get done and nothing's going to get in the way of it. And I suspect not even Donald Trump is going to get the, in the way of this distribution of the vaccine. So I was totally impressed. And that's what three-star generals do. Yeah. Well, Cynthia, you know, let's talk about the military for a minute. Uh, your friend Donald Trump, uh, I guess, uh, what, what did they call it? The, uh, the, the, the weekend massacre or the Monday massacre. It was Monday this week. He, he's firing all these people, including Mark Esper. 
and replacing them with, with loyalists, with yes men um, from every source. He's, he's making uh, the military establishment, the in intelligence establishment around him an establish, establishment of, of yes men um, overnight uh, and after he lost the election. Um, and, you know, there are many commentators who are saying that that's because he wants to be able to rely on them when the physical crunch comes, when he won't leave the White House and somebody has to remove him. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Is the military going to stand with him? Well, I, I hope not. We know that he forced two um, DHS security uh, officials to resign. Uh, just and one of them, this is kind of important. One of them was the the um, the cyber arm of the DHS that was forced to resign. So that's kind of interesting. You wonder, uh, you know, we've got someone who's involved in the cyber security of our nation, and he's being forced to resign at a time when we're trying to find out more about cyber security. Doesn't make any sense to the normal rational brain. But you know, something that is being left out everywhere on all of the media, everywhere, I, it's hard to find even, but this new vaccine that's coming out is actually developed in Germany. Pfizer didn't develop it. We didn't develop it because we had this, you know, uh, Operation Warp Speed thing going on. It was because a, a firm called BioNTech in Germany came up with a new thing called messenger RNA or mRNA, which is a, a, a thing that they inject and then it gives your, your cells a genetic sort of instruction on how to fight this virus. And, and so that's where all this has come from. This same German company is also partners with China because they're going to get it too. We're going to be actually buying a hundred million doses from this German company. Yet everywhere I see, it's just being presented as Pfizer came up with this. It's all because of Trump. And I think he had nothing to do with any of it. US didn't even really have anything to do with it. It was a German company. That's very interesting because uh, six months ago, uh, Trump was trying to buy a German company. I don't know if it's the same one who was working on a vaccine and he tried to do it in a, a very a slippery way. He was trying to, he was trying to um, uh, uh, get their scientists to come over. Um, and um, and uh, Angela Merkel and the scientists uh, stood fast. They said, no, you can't buy the company and, and you can't uh, get our scientists. Um, and, and it could be the same company, except the deal's different now. The deal is different in the sense that uh, this German company is going to get paid for its work and it's not going to be owned by Pfizer or the United States or, or any country. It's going to be a German operation and they're going to get paid for their work. They're going to do well. I'm not sure it's the same company, but uh, it's an interesting notion to find that at one time he was trying to, um, you know, proselytize them. And now it's not, that's not happening. This is a partnership instead or a purchase. Yeah. Right, I'm gonna to have to look that up because I'm certainly curious now to see if it was the same company or not. Yeah, so Winston, you know, in, in all this, we have these two tracks. We have, we have Trump's Michigas, and that means craziness, um, where he's acting like a three-year-old and, and trying to draw all his Republican friends into it. And there are many of them, the 70 million people. Um, at the same time, um, you know, we have a surge, a monstrous surge. Um, is he doing anything or is he busy, um, you know, stamping his feet these days? Is the United States government doing anything to actually deal with the virus or, or is that just poppycock? Well, I, I, Donald Trump has never done anything for the virus except deny its existence, blame it on Democrats, uh, whatever. I mean, anything that comes out of that needs to be dismissed. He's had a second uh, super spreader event inside his cabinet. I think today, uh, let's see, who was announced that, 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 that he had um, COVID? It was uh, one of his former- Yeah, that was a couple of days ago and then some advice, and, the, and the new one this morning, his advisor. Yeah. And you know, it's, so 
we can discount any of that. Again, for folks it, out there, take your own measures as best as you can. There are live maps where you can see the spread of this virus in real time now. Um, what you can do is not go to people's houses, not take off your mask, not go for Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever. Realize those are the micro spreader events that are really making the biggest impact here. As it's it's as horrendous, isn't it? I mean, you know, he's not taking any steps. In fact, he, all along, he's been discouraging the use of masks. And that's one of the reasons why he's got these cases around him and these super spreader events. It's just like negative, negative effort. Well, um, you know, remember Fauci says that the the overwhelming majority of 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 um, contaminations or, or spreading is happening at small events of three, four, five, six, ten, you know, eight people in the office. They're they're being rigorous, and then at lunchtime they're sitting around the same table, sort of laughing hard at a joke, and there you go, everyone's infected. So uh, they say. If you go to Thanksgiving and you're there with 10 people, one of them will have COVID. If you are there with 25 people, 100% of the people will end up with COVID at the end of the, the meal or just about because it's so um, easily spread. So again, this is back in our home court. And I did, I was happy to see that the CDC updated its guidelines to say, not only does the mask protect others, it protects you. And so that, if nothing else, some enlightened self-interest there may help more people wear masks who were previously denying them. And I think at this stage, we're beyond a, um, you know, masks cause cancer or whatever, you know, the narrative is being brought up or that, that, that they're fake news or, or whatever. So um, I think we are moving ahead with rationality, with people becoming sane that Donald Trump has lost the election. Um, you know, all of this is hand in hand in that these narratives are being unwound or just just exposed for the falsehoods that they are. We need to move on as a nation. We need to follow President-elect Biden. He's already got his task force being assembled. Uh, he He's going to start. He's already started. And, and people are looking to him for leadership and advice as the president of the United States, because let's face it, current one has abdicated anything except throwing a, a temper tantrum while he's trying to raise funds to cover for his, uh, for his losses. And he just needs to, as uh, 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 Sheldon Adelson said in um, Las Vegas uh, uh, Review Journal, that um, voter fraud does a disservice, saying that there's pervasive voter fraud does a disservice to his more rabid supporters because the idea is simply false. Uh, it's not. It's not the way that America. San Francisco Chronicle says it's not the way American presidents behave. Well, where we, uh, as Donald Trump oh, says, no. it's not an end game. It's Trump versus America, and it's time to take sides. Well, we have his lawyers saying it's there's no substance behind the lawsuit. So it's time. the The people are turning. You got more Republicans jumping on every hour now, saying time to accept these results. Share intelligence with the Biden um, transition team, and and on and on. So, yes, and, and things seem to be unraveling for Trump, knock wood. Uh, but Stephanie, what, what I find very interesting is that while he is doing nothing to help COVID, nothing to help the people, uh, no Secondary Cares Act or anything like that, zero, busy on the golf course, okay, his people are in the Supreme Court arguing against the Affordable Care Act. Care Act. They want to take it apart. They want to effectively repeal it judicially. Um, what's, that's sort of a, remarkable, isn't it? Why is he doing that? And, and what chances does he have to succeed? Well, I, I just think the uh, ACA thing is uh, the, the leftover spaghetti that he threw all, he just keeps throwing that up against the wall. So, you know, in the hopes that, you know, it'll stick, somebody's going to decide to do something more than what it appears they might decide. And it's not coming for six months. But I think um, really importantly, what I see as keeping us in the muck here is, and with under the, the Trump umbrella is that. I understand that 50% from the newscast, 50% of Americans um, around the election time on exit interviews did not think that the virus was bad, that it was under control. Just, just try, to, try to accept that, that that's what they think. Okay, then the- They, they still think he's right. Yeah. We talked about that. They think he's right. They think he's their man still now. 
<clears throat> and they believe him, whatever he tells them. Well, and the other, the, uh, and, the, and what Fox is not putting out, but I've been watching Fox, they've been a little bit better since it's raging everywhere. And in North Dakota, it's turning out that we're finally at the edge of the cliff. We're going over the cliff. Why? Not because of tests, not because of PPE, not because of, of what people are doing, not wearing masks. It's because the doctors and the nurses are getting sick and are not able to do the work. So what it is we face, which to me is the final that take over, we're, we're in serious bad trouble if we don't have the medical people. And it has been totally confusing me since the New York crisis where nobody's been talking about these are people that are taking care of the, of the patients. And what about if there's no more of those? We're all going to have COVID and no doctors, nurses. Well, it's worse, though. I mean, there was one fellow reported this week who uh, after his COVID experience, which was like a 60 day in the hospital experience, had spent a million dollars of somebody's money, a million dollars of somebody's money. Now, if you take the Affordable Care Act away, and you take his insurance away, who's going to pay the million dollars? This, yeah. this, this could be a tragedy beyond even the tragedy that you described. Right. So not even no money, no people that, I mean, this is where you get down to the scourge of the black plague and smallpox. You're lying in the street, literally. I mean, outside the hospital, you might've gotten that far and there's nobody to take you. I mean, yeah. right now all the, the beds are gone, but that's not the worst of it. We used to think, well, oh, that's pretty bad. No, that's not bad. That the bad yeah. is only you have no it just gets worse. So, so Tim, you know, these things, I mean, we've known that COVID is really the center of the, of the argument here. At some level, at some level, it had to be the center of the campaign. It involves so many people, so, so many people afraid for themselves and their families. How about right now? Is it still the center of, of Trump's unraveling? What's the connection between his unraveling and COVID? I'm having a visceral reaction to the conversation between you and Stephanie. And Stephanie reminds me of the travesty of a dictator, a president that has somehow brainwashed 70 some odd million people that COVID is a hoax. It was a democratic hoax. And that is not a, a real threat of a virus that's killing over almost a quarter of a million of our fellow Americans. I'm having a visceral reaction that uh, the denial continues. And I'm almost at the point to suggest it's time to get the video cameras out, open up the mobile morgue trucks, and let the public see what's inside the mobile morgues. Maybe that will convince them that this isn't a hoax. And so his unraveling is for 74 million people that don't think it's a hoax. It's, uh, it's a real deal, and maybe they've lost family members. Uh, for the other poor 70 million people, I don't know what to say about them. Maybe they're okay with him shooting someone on Fifth Avenue as well. It's almost to that point. And um, at some point, how many more Americans do we have to lose before 70 million people think this is a real threat and they need to be part of the solution, not part of the ignorant problem? But is this playing? You know, right now we have this contention, this, this, this trouble uh, about him staying in the White House and threatening not to leave, uh, compromising, you know, his uh, advisors and military advisors. Um, you know, we're, we're at a crisis point. I mean, some people are, are calling it a coup because he, you know, is making all these efforts to stay. Uh, now I know people are leaving him, some people, some people, not everybody, not maybe a, a lot of the people in the 70 million and a lot of the people in the Senate are still loyal to him, believe it or not. But you know, what, what, is, what role is this playing? Is it, is it an appropriate role? Are all these people turning their backs on it? Could they be so irrational? What's, what's, the, what's the formula here? Why is it going down this way? And is it changing? Well, I think you're suggesting there's a, there's a rational answer to a whole administration of irrational people that are self-interested in their own personal agenda of either re-election or not being um, you know, hunted down by Donald Trump's uh, tweets. And so to answer your question, um, it's a state of paralysis. Uh, your notes before the show is, who's in charge? Well, on paper, it's Mike Pence, Vice President Pence. On paper, he's in charge. Um, in reality, it's, it's 
it's a it's a shiftless gearless car that's rolling down the hill without brakes and that will continue until january 20th and it, it's a travesty and it is the most embarrassing stain upon this nation for the rest of the world to observe and i i just can't say any more than how, how ridiculous this entire situation is yeah but Maybe it's I too much coffee but i'm fed up with it it's the reality though you'll have to admit it's the reality and it's not resolved yet and uh, as and when he is removed from the White House, and we should talk about exactly how that would happen, um, he's going to be out there with his, with his, uh, semi, his uh, megaphone um, talking again to his base. Um, how, how do you think the increasing numbers of cases and, and deaths are going to affect his opportunities, his chances at re-election? Will he be able to skate past that? Jay, I believe that Donald will do like he does everything. He'll um, dismiss it. He'll dismiss it on a repetitive basis. And half the country will say, yeah, he's right. Whatever it's that Donald says, I believe. And so he's not concerned about uh, 300,000 or 400,000 more you know, deaths, uh, you know, inclusive of the 100, 250,000 we already have. He doesn't care. He doesn't care who dies. He cares only about his reelection in 2024, which on the surface of it is absurd. Who, what, what candidate would take, you know, would be responsible for all these deaths and expect to be reelected? Well, maybe Donald Trump. Well, maybe some people would vote for him. You know, we have three things going on, Cynthia. Um, we have COVID. We have Trump's uh, constitutional, constitutional violations. Uh, and we have an economy that is, has fallen apart. It is still falling apart. Okay? All those things. Last night, I, I called my, my longtime friend in, in Western Canada, and I asked him a question I've asked him before. Can he adopt me? Um, because I, 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 <laughs> I like to come and live in Canada with him. I'll do the dishes. Um, and, um, you know, the, the problem is that this is not in a vacuum. These three destructive tracks we're on right now, they play, they, they interact. And they also demonstrate our standing. They affect our standing in the world. How do you think they are affecting our standing in the world now? Well, um, you can imagine what every veteran around the world thought when they heard that there were 4,254 veterans that have died from COVID. It's a pretty shocking number to have to deal with on Veterans Day, I thought, on Monday. I thought that was pretty shocking. You know, um, I can imagine that they think, well, I, I can't actually, I can't imagine what they would think because they must just go, what are, what are they thinking about? Now, I went around the world in 2017 just after Donald Trump won and right before he actually be, was inaugurated. And every single person to a one, well, I take that back, two out of the hundreds and hundreds of people that I spoke to, two like Trump and everybody else said, what are you blokes thinking about over there? I mean, like every single one of them said that. Everywhere I went in every country, they thought, is this a joke? And there was two guys. One was an oil man, so it makes sense that he likes Trump. And the other one was just this, like, tobacco-chewing, I don't know, taxi driver guy who likes that he's a tough guy, right? And and I think that's kind of like what people here kind of like, too. They like that he's a, a tough guy. But, you know, when you talk about the military, um, when I was looking up some of these numbers for today's show, I thought it was very interesting that there are 91,000 cases, actually almost 92,000 cases in the military, but there's no new cases. There's 111 deaths. Out of 91,000 cases, there's 101, and that's all. Okay, now for the veterans, 85,000 cases, 4,000 deaths. You know, for 91,000 cases, it seems like there should be more deaths. And the fact that there's no new cases, there's, you know, all of that just shows me we're not really hearing what's happening in the military. 
So it's very possible that the military is pretty sick. And if that's the case, they're out there spreading it around the world. So the world must be going, wait a minute. We know they don't want any Americans around. They've already told us that they don't want Americans around. We're not even allowed to go into a lot of countries. So how, how does that, you know, equate to what's happening with the military? You know, your guess well, I mean, It goes to national security, too. It goes to, you know, being vulnerable at a critical time. It goes to uh, China and Russia taking advantage of us. Uh, when they see we're weak, they, they try to drive a truck through that. Uh, you know, so, so Winston, it's time for some predictions here. Um, we have a bunch of tracks, if you will, as I mentioned, going on at the same time. And it seems like to me that all these things are converging. The economy is in terrible shape. There's no relief coming out of Congress. COVID is in terrible shape. There's no relief. It, you know, and, and the vaccine is really not here yet. I mean, the smart guys say it's going to still be another year even though we had, you know, the uplifting remarks from that general, the logistical general. And, and we have Trump, you know, tearing the Constitution up. These things are all, they're all converging. That's why we come to you. That's why we come to you when we want to feel better. We want to feel your optimism. Can, can we feel a little optimism, please? What's your prediction, Winston? I am completely optimistic. The nation is finally coming to its senses. Although you can read some polls that say 70% of Republicans say they don't believe the results and it was fraudulent. You can read other ones that say 70% say, yes, he lost. We understand that there's always going to be some, some diehards that don't. But I think you're going to see mass defections. If he doesn't say, he's not going to say I concede, but he's going to say I have authorized the, uh, or someone will say we've authorized the transition office to take over. It will be steps in that direction. The military is not going to back a coup for Donald Trump. Uh, we are, and, and you know, as far as our world standing goes, watch Angela Merkel's welcoming of Biden's election. That tells you where the world is. They are welcoming back America to its rightful, well, I, I won't say rightful, it's a little entitling, uh, entitlist, but but it's traditional leadership role that the world craves, that it needs for stability. And uh, they are welcoming us back to that. And I think that we will wake up in seven, eight short weeks with a brand new sunny day. And we will begin to undo the enormous damage that's been inflicted on us these last four years. And it's already started. That's the good news. We all got to do our part. In the meantime, folks, wear your masks, wash your hands, don't gather in groups, and we will be come out of this. It's going to be I, I, a I lot of pain, but oh, we're going to come out better. of it. I, I feel better. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, if you would see, I better, would feel better. Here's, here's, the, here's the problem. Uh, you know, hopefully within seven weeks, the constitutional crisis will be resolved. Um, hopefully Biden will, you know, will come in with some kind of plan on the economy. Um, and at least we have, you know, some level of confidence that his government will, will, be, will be more rational. But, you know, the virus goes on. And when all of that settles down, we're still going to have this spike. So, Stephanie, what is, what is your prediction on that? You can have a great, wonderful commission of all these guys, of the quality of Ron Klain, you know, good guys and girls. But, but the, the question is, can we really make a dent in this oh, before yeah. it's too late? Oh, or, yeah. or are we just going to be fighting up, you know, a Sisyphus kind of mountain where no matter what we do, we still have the virus? Well, whatever Sisyphus, you know, did, uh, we're going to be doing because we already have many examples of getting it under control. And it's not what anybody in the uh, uh, voting for Trump is, is going to like. I mean, my nephew is a plebe at the Naval Academy. I mean, they took them in, uh, you know, a couple months ago. Um, they've got a few cases, but they've got all those those rules. You're, they're separated. They're in single rooms. They get together the same group. Anybody gets it, they get hauled over to the infirmary and left there until it gets over it. So there are things that we can do, and the, uh, and and we're going to have to get like that. So whatever issues are uh, that um, Cynthia mentioned about the military, they don't. They're not going to be reluctant to impose distancing and, 
and, and, and getting these habits under control and getting in mass. So, I mean, we're going to have to move into that, like it or not. I mean, it's been demonized, been demonized. The very things that we have to do to knock this bug back to the bat cave it came from, we've got to go do those things. We got to do them probably not for that long, two months. Oh, I hope so. Uh, so. So, Tim, can we shorten the horizon to like a week? Yeah, this, is, we, this is the hardest question of all. And uh, since you have the last word, Tim. I want to ask you this question. What is going to happen in the next week? Because we're all, all these issues are in high gear. They're all, they're all spinning out of, out of control. <clears throat> What's going to happen between now and say next Thursday? Well, I know our producer is freaking out right now, so I'll keep this very brief. I'm going with Winston and the fact that Republicans uh, will actually get on board with the thought that Donald Trump is, is, is done. He's, he, his, his influence over this current cycle is done. And so you're going to see more senators jump off the Trump train. And we're going to see, a, I think, a return to uh, a concern about the, the deaths of COVID and the fact that it's still spreading. So more people start wearing masks. And we'll start turning the corner, not to use a Donald Trump phrase, but we will start turning the corner, at least on the case number load and hopefully the death count. Okay, uh, you got to watch it every day. I, you know, we're tired of watching it, but we still have to watch it even with greater attention. <clears throat> the other thing is, Tim, I hope you remember that this is all being recorded. And when we look at this again next week, we're going to remember your words and, and see what happens. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you, Winston. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, this is uh, Coronaville, and wow, I hope there's a, a time comes soon when we can change the name of this show, too. <laughs> Aloha, you guys. Aloha.